You ever look at somebody and say, just because you can doesn't mean that you should? Well, I'm that guy. And after creating over 15 different Frankenstein soul swap hybrids, today I'm gonna do it again by turning this Jordan 8 into a Yeezy hybrid. Let's get down to it. You guys might remember this Yeezy 700 sole from when I made a pair of Yeezy 700 golf cleats. Click the link right up here to watch that video. And this Air Jordan 8 upper actually comes from a pair of old personals that when I tore apart to re-glue, the midsole started to crumble on me due to age and wear. Now that the Air Jordan 8 midsole has been removed from both uppers, it's time to get down to the preparation work. I'll be placing the sole on the uppers as tight as I possibly can get it, tracing the lines with the heat erasable pen, and then prepping all the surface underneath my traced area so that way I have good surfaces to bond. To begin the preparation process, I insert solid shoe trees into the uppers of the shoes. This allows me to more appropriately align the midsole to the uppers and then mark off with a heat erasable pen exactly where the midsoles are going to align with the uppers during the re-glue. After I finish marking all my lines on the uppers, I start to clean up the midsoles by utilizing a Dremel tool. For this, I interchange my bit depending on the curvature of the surface that I'm working on and the type of surface that I'm working on. It's important to make sure that you even out any sort of uneven marks within the midsole, but you do want to keep a rough surface because that helps with the bond when you're re-gluing. After finishing the prep work on the midsoles, I move over to the uppers. I utilize my Dremel to help to remove any old glue and to roughen up all of the surfaces that are going to be glued to the new midsole. I switch between my different bits depending on the surfaces that I'm working with and if I'm trying to remove glue or roughen the surface more. After roughening and prepping the surface, I move to a cutting tool to help to remove all the plastic tabbing from the sides of the Jordan 8. Originally, I intended on keeping some of the plastic tabbing there, but after everything was said and done, I did end up removing the plastic tabs from both the medial sides and the lateral sides of both shoes just due to the look and to make the project a bit easier. I finished the first part of the prep work utilizing my Dremel. It's time to get down to the last part of the prep work utilizing some cotton balls with acetone to remove any remaining glue and debris. I decided to remove the side plastic tabs from the uppers completely. They were cracking on both the medial and lateral sides on both shoes. They were just going to interfere with my re-glue and by removing them, I was able to get much cleaner lines with my prep work. Taking a look at the midsole, it's still a pretty rough surface, but at least it's a lot more even than it was before, which will make for a better bond between the surfaces. The Dremel was a rather effective tool working with this midsole. The next step is to get the glue applied and then let it cure for two hours before heat activating it. Let's go get some glue on these shoes. For all of my re-glue projects, I utilize Barge Super Stick Contact Cement, which I find to be the best. For this part of the process, I start by utilizing one layer of glue, letting it dry for 30 minutes, and then applying a second thinner layer of glue. I do this to both the midsoles as well as the uppers. Sometimes if I feel like the glue is not sticking well enough, I will even go ahead and apply a third light layer to make sure that all spots are covered appropriately. been two hours that I've let the glue cure and now it is time to create the bond between the uppers and the soles. Let's apply some heat, get the glue reactivated and bond these surfaces together. Letting the glue cure for two hours allows you to match up and align your surfaces without the glue tacking the surfaces together immediately. Once I figured out a proper alignment, I start by reheating the glue at the toe, bonding those surfaces together, and then moving to the heel before I do the sidewalls on the lateral and medial sides. 
this soul swap hybrid has officially been bonded i was able to get some nice clean lines and a good attachment between the uppers and the soles as with almost any soul swap hybrid there are a couple of spots that need some touch-up work let's finish up with the cleanup work before we take a final look at this pair of kicks my first round of touch-up work was primarily focused on excess glue removal from after the first re-glue and any sort of glue touch-ups that I needed to do to ensure that I had an appropriate bond between the midsole and the upper along every single section of the shoe. There were several different spots that didn't seem to take the glue bond quite as well, so I had to go through and re-prep all of those different sections and add a little bit of extra glue, but at the end of it all, I was able to ensure that I had a strong bond on both shoes at every single section between the midsole and the upper. This part of the preparation process ensured that I had a good bond and that the shoes were ready to be worn. At this point, this sole swap hybrid is nearly complete. Everything is looking pretty clean so far, but there are some final touch-ups that I need to make. I am gonna have to go through and do a little bit more detail work, cleaning up loose threads, trying to remove some of the excess glue, and potentially even dyeing the new buck portions of the upper. I started my second round of touch-ups by removing any sort of loose threads. While I was able to cut off a lot of them, there were quite a few that I also had to burn off too. After burning off loose threads, I gave the uppers a clean by using a soft nylon bristle brush to kind of scrub down and wipe any dirt off the uppers. I did this to try and preserve the integrity of the new buck. After giving a dry clean to the uppers, it was time to give them a deep clean. For this part of the process, I utilized New Life Kicks New Antidote Solution. While I did try my best to avoid getting the new buck portions of the upper wet as much as I possibly could, it was unavoidable. I am happy to say that after this cleaning, they did end up looking quite a bit better. After doing a deep clean on this pair of kicks, I let them dry for several hours and decided that I was going to dye the new buck portions of the upper. For this, I utilized Angelus Suede Dye in the light blue color and some Q-tips to help to apply it in a little bit more of a precise fashion. I also utilized the suede dye on the exposed raw leather cuts in the upper. After getting my suede dye on, I utilized some New Life Kicks Just Suede to help the dye to spread and set a bit more evenly in all of the new buck portions of the upper. Any dye that did spill over onto the leather portions of the upper, I was able to wipe off using some denatured alcohol. Once these shoes had been treated with some mink oil, it was time to lace them up. At this point in time, I am essentially done with this Yeezy Air Jordan Soul Swap Hybrid. These things are definitely a bit funky, but I am here for it. When I first put these components together, I really did not think that I was going to like them, but since actually bonding them together, the style has really grown on me quite a bit. I'm really surprised at how well this actually worked because when I was trying to align the components prior to bonding them, they didn't necessarily seem like they were gonna match up appropriately. Although there was a pretty good alignment between the uppers and the soles, there are a couple places on the uppers where the raw prepped leather does stick up beyond the midsole attachment. On the black nubuck uppers, I did dye them to be a little bit more blue so that it would match the sole a little bit better. And although the actual blue color isn't even close to what was on the sole, the fact that there's a contrast between these multiple different shades of blue adds different dimension to this pair of kicks. This soul swap hybrid is majorly different than anything I've done in the past before, but I'm really excited with how it turned out. This is definitely not a soul swap for everybody, but I'm curious to hear what you think about this hybrid. Please, let me know in the comments below. If you guys learned anything in today's video or found it entertaining, take the 10 extra seconds to hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. Doing so really goes a long way in helping to support this channel. By the time this video goes live, I will officially be commissioning Soul Swap hybrid projects. So if you're interested in getting a project done yourself, check out the website at www.sailboatsupplies.xyz. You can also feel free to reach out on social media at Sailboat Supplies. Thank you to everybody that stuck around until the cold 
bitter end of this video. You guys already know, I'm Sailboat, and I'm out of here.